I want to return to those shocking comments made by voice architect and chief yes campaigner Marsha Langton. As you saw just before with Andrew Connell before the break, Langton has been filmed calling social workers, the police, coalition voters and no voters to racists and or stupid. It's pretty shocking, but not unexpected. Joining me now for her take on all of this and that sneak preview of the new documentary, Shadow Minister for Indigenous Affairs, Senator... Uh, Senator Jacinta Nampa Jimpa Price. Senator Price, um, well, you're almost at the finishing line. You have had a baptism of fire, I have to say. We'll, we'll get to the personal toll on this uh, campaign and what's been visited upon you particularly and your family in a moment. But you've heard the comments from Marsha Langton. According to her, you're headlining the no campaign. You're either stupid or you're a racist. What's your reaction? Hmm. It, I mean, it, it really doesn't surprise me for somebody who's had a long-standing position uh, where she supposedly supports Indigenous Australians, um, you know, has had um, been very influential when it's come to uh, policy, when it's come to decisions made around, uh, you know, in the Indigenous space. Uh, she's had a very long time at that table uh, and if her voice um, hasn't been beneficial... You know, why is it going to be beneficial now? And it, it, it's... I mean, I'm not, I'm no stranger to attacks from um, Marcia. She's attacked me. Uh, she's attacked my mother before. Uh, she's made some pretty horrible derogatory claims about uh, the both of us in the past. She's made it about many people. Uh, it's no surprise that she continues down this particular path. All right, let's move to your documentary. It will be released tomorrow by Fair Australia. I have to say, I've, I've watched it. I think it's a, I think it's harrowing. It goes into a lot of the lived experience of your life and many who have grown up in remote Indigenous communities. A lot of this is not what we're hearing from the university-educated activists, the Indigenous activists who, who sit there on the ABC and front all these government bodies. I'm going to play a little bit of it for the audience now. It, it's a conversation, or set it up, it's a conversation between... You and your mum, Bess Price, where you reference the disappearance of your aunt Marion in 1981 and the sort of control used particularly against women in Indigenous communities. Have a listen. She was promised to, to a man who already had a wife and um, they were both taken to an ad station he took her, you know, the family took her to an ad station where they left her with him and um, she ran away. She ran away and hasn't been seen or heard from. That's, that's the story. Nobody knows where she is. And she's been missing since the 80s. Women in my family tell me that she didn't want to be forced to marry this man because, I mean, what 14-year-old girl wants to be forced into a marriage to begin with? Any premature death or illness is caused through sorcery or black magic, if you like. And it is often used also in terms of payback. You know, if you've done something wrong, uh, a sorcerer can take your life for it. And as far as I'm concerned, I, I see it as another form of control, to control people, but nowadays especially, and probably in the old days too, to control women mostly, you know, unruly women, women who aren't going to behave themselves. A lot of Australians, Jacinta, won't be, um, won't be across how the cultural constraints in many remote communities work and particularly work against women, uh, work against women and children. Why, why have you gone public with a really personal story about your family at this time? Because my family belong to some of the most marginalised Indigenous people in this country. And there is a failure by certainly the elites of this country to recognise that um, there are elements of traditional culture that are contributing to the rates of violence within our communities, um, the rates of, you know, shorter life expectancy and all those issues. But 
we're not allowed to address them because um, we, we want to romanticise what culture is, but those who are living in it, who are out of sight, out of mind for the rest of the country, are exploited for an industry that's been built on the backs of their misery, and now they want to constitutionally enshrine uh, an entity which continues ignoring these voices. And there's no way these, these voices will be heard through this new entity. But it's time that these voices were heard, and that was the whole purpose of filming this documentary, was to give um, mm. those voiceless uh, an opportunity to be heard. I, I want to now talk to you about your cousin who reported the rape of a young girl by her uncle. Your cousin was then threatened for reporting it to the police. Have a listen. A young girl in my family, uh, she had she had reported to police that her father had raped her from the age from between the ages of thirteen to sixteen, and she went to my cousin to tell her what had been happening, uh, and my cousin assisted her to to make the report to police and was also um, a witness uh, at the, at the trial. You know, when you go to court and hear a girl in her mid-teens tell that court she was raped by her own father, and when you know that her aunt, a maternal aunt, another mother, Aboriginal way, is attacked with an axe because that woman supported her niece, her daughter, Aboriginal way, when she went to the police and to the courts, There should be a stronger word than hero. And, and my cousin, who had been the witness, who had assisted her niece to come forward and report to police, she was, um, she was threatened, she was attacked by the perpetrator's brother, uh, who was the uncle of the victim. And it was his mother who encouraged this attack, the grandmother of the victim that encouraged this attack on my cousin because she dared bring her son to justice for the crimes he committed against his own daughter. Jacinda, when I met you um, many years ago before you were in Parliament, before everyone around Australia knew your name, one of the things you said to me, the motivation of you putting your hand up in public life was to do something for the voiceless Aboriginal women and Aboriginal children, and that the power constraint, the disparity in Aboriginal communities that's so weighted in the favour of, of men has to change in this country or there will be no chance for Aboriginal women. Um, mm. You've got brickbats, I know, in the media out of this voice campaign but you've long caught brickbats inside Aboriginal communities, as your mum has too, mm. an incredibly brave woman, mm. for speaking out on these issues. Um, why have we not heard the Prime Minister say that his voice will fix this problem and here's how it'll do? Why the lack of detail from the PM? Well, that's exactly right. Why lack of detail from all the advocates of the voice? I mean you know, in the last week, they're clutching at straws to suggest that this is all about supporting women. But, you know, any time we try to bring these issues to surface, when Peter Dutton was in Alice Springs to talk about the sexual abuse of Indigenous children, we get pushback from leading national advocacy bodies for Indigenous children in this country. There has been a silencing, there's been a sweeping under the rug and it continues on to this day. And certainly the Prime Minister, even when, when Peter Dutton calls for a Royal Commission to the Sexual Abuse of Indigenous Children, the Prime Minister is not about to launch um, a, a Royal Commission. Instead, he's spending $350 million to change our constitution instead of um, doing immediately what he could um, to, to, to hear the voices of children, Australian children, in this country. But because they're Indigenous, we've got to keep our mouths shut. We've got to not portray Indigenous people in any bad light because apparently that um, makes people racist or it encourages racism. So let's just keep the voiceless voiceless. Um, that's and that's that's what the advocates of the voice do. Uh, that's certainly what Labor does. 
They're not interested uh, in addressing this. Um, you know, Senator Cox the other day suggested on the floor of the Senate that when I bring up issues uh, of my grandmother being abused, um, that what are we going to do if we hold an inquiry? Um, we're putting these people's lives in danger. We're going to hold in-camera sessions for these people. Well, their voices need to be heard, and if they want to come up and be heard, they should be heard, and we shouldn't be silencing them um, because if we silence them, we're allowing this to continue in communities, and it really can't continue. Yeah, I do find it extraordinary that they want truth-telling going back two centuries, but they're not prepared to have truth-telling going back two months or three months or four years about some of the issues you're talking about. I, I want to know on a personal level what this no campaign, you headlining the no campaign, has meant for you. I, I saw today that your personal mm. phone number's been leaked. It's been put out online. Mm. You've had a barrage of abusive messages. Um, I know mm. you're going to talk to the press club tomorrow. I know you're going to be there front and centre. But give us a sense of this personal, this personal toll. Oh, look, it's... It's massive. It's it's absolutely huge. And really, the, the the main reason I'm doing this is for those vulnerable people who continue to be shut down, sidelined, and ignored. They're the they're the reason. They they are who is driving me. Who have always driven me. Who drove me to put my hand up to be in the Senate. Who, it's why I. I carry the target around on my back is because they need me to, because if I don't, well, who else is going to? You know, people might be scared that they might be called racist. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm copying death threats. I'm, 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 I've had, had a barrage of really horrible messages today calling me a C-U-N-T, a, a, you know, an, 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 a, a B word and all kinds of stuff um, left on my phone. Mm. But it says more about who they are, not me. I'm going to keep going because there's little kids that need me to keep going. Uh, and this Prime Minister, uh, you know, he can take all the responsibility in the world for the division that's going on in our country right now for the fact that he continues to ignore the voices of these women. And, I, and Sharon Long is one of those women who features in the documentary. I brought her to Parliament. Do you think a single member of the government have wanted to stop and listen to her story or the story of her cousin who was found dead hanging from a boab tree in a community? No, they don't want to hear from her. They, they couldn't give her, you know, a, a second of day. Not the Teals, not Senator David Pocock, none of them. None of the virtue signalers in Parliament House will give her the time of day. Well, I'm here to make sure those voices are heard and I'll continue doing that with the barrage of abuse that I get. Look, you know, I think you're extraordinary. My audience, though, think you're extraordinary. And I think Australians, I mean, you've, you've, you've only been in this job on the front bench for a matter of months. I think Australians think you're extraordinary. Just into price. Uh, good luck tomorrow at the Press Club. It's a, it's a bear pit down there, but I'm sure you'll acquit yourself well. Thank you for your time.